We're about to enter Yom Kippur. For years, there was one question about Yom Kippur that I just couldn't shake. There I was, minutes before the start of the holiest day of the year. I couldn't help but get swept up in the moment. Hundreds of Jews are walking the streets, filling up the shuls, the synagogues, and the temples. Ready, prepared, satiated and serious, much of the Jewish nation for a brief moment stands at attention as the sun sets and Yom Kippur begins. If there was ever a captive moment in the Jewish calendar, it was now. The chazan or cantor slowly mounts the podium. A hush falls over the crowd as he begins. Now I'm thinking, say something inspirational. Start a song or a prayer or something that befits this moment. The crowd is yours. Deliver. Call Nidre. I look over to the English. Every vow? Vesare. Another vow? Ushvuye. Another vow? Oh my God. Is he really talking about absolving vows? Now? Is he kidding? There must be a thousand more appropriate statements the rabbis could have picked for this moment, and they went with vows? I couldn't shake that feeling. I mean, who's planning this program? How could they have missed this opportunity? Then I heard this story. There's this guy that wanted to strike it rich. They told him, if you go out west, there's gold. If you dig enough, you can find some. He said, Sounds like a good idea. Leaves his family and travels across the country to find gold. He's gone a month, two months, ten months. He doesn't find anything. And he really misses his home. So he calls up the railroad and goes, when's the next train back home? And they go, well, that's a really far place. We almost never go there. The next train's in a month. He goes, well, how much is the ticket? Go, well, I can get you a first class seat for X price. He goes, well, sounds great, but a month's really far. You know what? I'm not sure if I want to go on a commit or not. I'll call you back. Calls back a few weeks later and goes, how much for the seat now? And they go, well, same price, but it's a week before. It's going to be a coach seat. Okay, I don't mind the seat, but I'm not sure if I want to commit. I'll call you back. Calls back a day before and goes, how much now? He goes, well, the train's packed. Standing room only. I'm not sure. I'll call you back tomorrow. Well, you know what? I'll come down to the train station from the mood and I'll buy a ticket on the train. But no problem. Train leaves at noon. Man goes to sleep, wakes up in the morning, goes, I totally want to go home. I'm totally homesick. Looks at his watch. It's 11 o'clock in the morning. He totally overslept. Throws everything in his bags, packs his bags, runs out the house, jumps into a car, and everything that can go wrong goes wrong. He hits traffic, he gets lost, he finally pulls into the train station, it's 11.58. Grabs his bags, runs up the stairs, and then he hears, eh, eh, train, it's pulling away. Lugging his bags, he finishes up the stairs, he gets to the platform and he sees the train is literally pulling away, he doesn't know what to do. So instinctively, he just starts running after the train. And he's running his bags, holding his bags after the train, and the train is literally pulling away, and the conductor in the back of the train sees what's going on. He feels bad for the guy walks to the back of the train, comes outside, and as the train's pulling away, he sticks out his hand to the guy and he goes, drop your bags and jump. And the man's holding his bags and goes, jump, jump, drop your bags and jump. And the man's holding his bags and he looks up at the conductor and he looks down at his bags and he has to make a choice. His bags or the train. And the conductor screams out, drop your bags and jump. You know, we spend our whole year searching for gold, running around, getting, looking, thinking, and yearning for more things, right? But when all is said and done, what we really yearn for is happiness, meaning, and purpose. All the really good stuff. Now, our rabbis teach us that every day we have to wake up in the morning and say, the world was created for me. That means I'm in this world for a purpose. I have a task, and that task involves God's plan. When we introspect into our lives, tap into our true talents, and understand who we really are, that's real happiness. That's real meaning. See, we deep down want a relationship with God, and we know He wants one too. We hear the high holidays are coming, the Yom Narayim, and we have a moment where we want to go home. But to introspect a month before buys us a first class seat, life's too busy and we don't want to commit. So Rosh Hashanah comes, and we start to introspect then, but still can't commit. And then Yom Kippur comes and we're standing in shul with hundreds of other Jews, and we realize that we want more. We don't want to just spend our lives searching for the promised gold. We want more happiness, we want more purpose and meaning. We want a deeper relationship with God. We want to go home. Yom Kippur is starting. The time to connect to God is now. 
the train is leaving the station. We don't know what to do. We're not prepared. So we just start to instinctively run. We introspect a little bit. We pray our hearts are finally open. But then all the excuses, fears, justifications and restrictions start. I don't know how to connect to God. I can't do any more than I'm doing. I'm too busy, too free, too young, too old, too secular, too religious, too many responsibilities, no responsibilities, too strong, too weak. I can't be him or her. I can't do that. I don't have the capacity or background. I don't want to look like that. I can't. I can't. I just can't. We've spent all year putting restrictions on ourselves, creating our own spiritual baggage. You see, in Judaism, the concept of putting restrictions on yourself is called a vow. And here we are, Yom Kippur. We all have that feeling of, I want in. I want more out of life. I want deeper. I want more meaningful. I want to be part of the greater picture. But the train's pulling away. This is the time to make change. So the Chazan stands up before everybody screams, Kol Nidre, all your vows, Vesare, all your restraints, Ushvuye, all your baggage, it's absolved. All the baggage that has held you back, that has stopped your spiritual growth till now, the train is leaving. Jump, drop your bags and jump. See, God says, I don't care what you've done in the past, I forgive you. But you need to take a chance. Drop your restrictions. Stop doubting yourself. Stop holding back. Drop your bags and jump. I'll catch you on Yom Kippur. On Yom Kippur we can, for a brief moment, be an angel. We can fly. We have no bags. We don't need to eat or drink. We don't have any needs. We don't have to worry about pleasures. We're free. Free to soar to whatever spiritual heights we choose. But before we do, we need to make a choice. The train or the bags. You know the feeling you get when you catch the train, the doors close behind you, and you know you're going to the right spot? That feeling of comfort? You know that feeling you get when you're a little kid and you climb a ladder or a short ledge and your daddy or mommy says, jump, I'll catch you, and you jump and they do? That's the feeling of your own kipper. We're in good hands. When you spend a day free, thinking about how great you can be, that's your own kipper. This Kol Nidre, for the first time all year or maybe your whole life, don't hold back. Drop your spiritual bags and jump. See you on the train.